Hello, I'm Steve Waterworth, Technical Marketing Manager at Weaveworks. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how Weaveworks extends the concept of GitOps from managing applications on a single Kubernetes cluster to managing a fleet of clusters. Weave GitOps focuses on the developer and operator experience and helps to manage infrastructure and application deployments across multiple cloud providers in your data center or at the edge, assisting with migrating between these platforms if necessary. Weave GitOps takes a modular approach. You can start small and grow with experience. Managing a complex fleet of Kubernetes clusters is a challenge that most organizations now face. It is made more difficult because Kubernetes is still new and many engineers lack experience. Weave GitOps makes it easy for DevOps engineers to self-serve their cluster management requirements while staying within the corporate standards. Weave GitOps enables platform engineers to define templates based on corporate standards for cluster size, version, observability, etc. With full roles-based access control, DevOps engineers can instantiate clusters based on those templates, providing a unified user experience across multiple cloud providers, in the data center, or at the edge. Weave GitOps is itself a Kubernetes-hosted application running on a small management cluster. The templates and other configuration are, of course, managed by Git. When a new cluster definition is merged in Git, the cluster API is used to provision that cluster on the target platform. For the demonstration, I'll be using Equinix Bare Metal as the platform with Firecracker Micro VMs provisioned with Flintlock Cluster API provider. Flintlock will spin up Firecracker Micro VMs for the control plane and worker nodes. Once the cluster is up, Weave GitOps will bootstrap itself onto the cluster and start the constant reconciliation process with Git. Now, let's see it in action. I've selected a template from the list available to me. Now all I have to do is complete the form with the values I require, within the limits set by the template. I give my cluster a name, select the networking provider and IP addresses. Next up, how many control plane instances and the version of Kubernetes. Note that the version is pinned down by the template. Finally, the number of worker nodes for my new cluster. That's everything required for Kubernetes, but before I create the cluster, I can choose to add some predefined applications. Profiles are Helm charts defined by the platform team, which can be referenced by the template definitions. The application of these profiles can be optional, like we see here, or they can be mandatory. For example, the Prometheus Grafana stack that I've just selected could be mandatory so that all clusters are created with observability already installed. I've already authenticated with GitHub, so I can go ahead and create a pull request to provision my new cluster. After a short time, my new cluster is shown waiting for the pull request review, approval, and merge. Following the link to the pull request in GitHub, inspecting the request, we see all the YAML that has been created from the template I selected and the values I provided. For the demo, I'll just merge this pull request. Back at the Weave GitOps dashboard, after a short time, the cluster status will change as the provisioning process starts. Drilling into the cluster details shows the status of the various components of the cluster. From here, I can download the cube context for my new cluster. Switching over to the command line, will be able to follow in real time the processes as the cluster bootstraps. The bottom right window is watching the Flintlock provisioning, which already shows our LM19 micro VM for the Kubernetes control plane.
Listening the nodes for my new cluster shows that the control plane has just started and is responding to API server requests. Waiting a short while while the two micro VMs for the workers get created. Now that the workers are starting, let's look at the pods and watch as the cluster continues bootstrapping. Notice that the Weave GitOps pods are starting along with the usual Kubernetes and networking pods. Once Weave GitOps is running, it will begin reconciliation and take any action required. Remember when I created my cluster, I selected the Prometheus profile and here we see the Prometheus stack pods starting. Here we have it. After about four minutes, my new cluster is up and running with the Prometheus profile I specified. Back at the Git repository that holds the definition. Using regular Git workflows, I can manage my cluster. I could upgrade my cluster to a new version by editing the version field. Alternatively, I could increase the replicas for the control plane. Remember that any edit would be via a pull request and subject to both peer review and policy as code checks to ensure that I do not stray outside corporate policy. Once I finish with my cluster, I can tidy up by creating a pull request to delete it. The status updates to show the deletion request. I'll follow the link to GitHub to view the pull request and for the demo, I'll just merge it in which deletes the files that define my cluster. After a short time, the cluster will be deleted. Back at the command prompt, we can watch as Flintlock deletes the micro VMs where the cluster was running. After a short time, all the micro VMs are deleted and the cluster has gone. Thank you for watching. To find out more about Weave GitOps, visit our website. We regularly host hands-on workshops. To join in, visit our events page.